morning. I am Pastor Deborah Porras, and I hope you've had a wonderful week, and we hope that you have a wonderful time worshiping with us this morning. We are gathering virtually this Sunday, and our leadership met, and we feel that it's best and safest for our community that we continue worshiping virtually only for this Sunday and next Sunday, and then we will reevaluate and communicate for the next Sundays beyond that. We hope that you saw our links for our worship bulletin and announcements, so that way you can check out all the announcements and information you need for things going on in our community, ways to serve and connect, but also so you can follow along if you need the bulletin to do so. Everything you need will be on the screens during our worship service, but we know that uh, many of us still like to have that worship bulletin as well. Please also make sure that you check out Worship Our Way. We will continue having that for our children. And uh, we know that people of all ages enjoy Worship Our Way uh, well. But that will be posted each Sunday on YouTube. It's posted at 9.30 usually, but it is available anytime after that. And we will continue posting those for as long as we do not have our children and families worship gatherings in person. So we may uh, continue having wow, even if we begin meeting for regular Sunday worship in person until the weather is allowing us to meet outside for our children and family worship gathering as well. This Sunday, we will begin having a Zoom fellowship following the worship service at 11 a.m. until we're able to gather back to in-person worship, just an informal time to catch up and see one another. So please join us for the Zoom fellowship time following the service at 11 a.m. We will also have our Carpenter Shelter meal the third Sunday of this month, as we do each month. The contact information for David Thompson is in there for you, and it is cookies and salad this month to help complete that meal for our friends at the Carpenter Shelter. If you're able to help with that, please let David Thompson know. And again, that information is in the bulletin for you so you can contact him. As we continue in worship, I invite you uh, to center yourselves and to open your spirit with a moment, a few moments of silence as we continue into our opening prayer together. I invite you to join us in our opening prayer together. Faithful God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, deeply grateful for the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown toward us. Your people, when we call out to you, are answered. You hear us. When we are exhausted, you give us the strength to go on. When we find ourselves in trouble, you are there, standing beside us. And so we come before you with gratitude and praise, offering you the worship of our hearts and lives. Open our eyes to see and know you here among us. Open our eyes to see and know that you are here among us. Open our ears to recognize your voice and then send us out from wherever we are to live and to work in the world as your faithful disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, amen.
Good morning. The first reading is from Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The second reading is from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again. As we continue in our service this morning, we continue exploring the Gospel of Luke, and we come to the Gospel of Luke in the midst of Jesus's ongoing ministry. Uh, we often forget that Jesus didn't call the disciples right at the start, but that was part of this ongoing ministry. He had already begun his ministry. He was teaching. He was traveling. We see in the Gospel of Luke, he had already uh, rebuked demons and healed people. He had already been teaching. The crowds were following him and and seeking out what he had to say and seeking out to be close to him, knowing that he was living out uh, God's teachings in a way that, that attracted people, that they wanted to learn and be a part of. And so in the midst of this, we have Jesus coming and calling his disciples. And what we see in this uh, passage is kind of almost a formula for how um, rabbis or teachers in this time would have called disciples. 
So in Jesus' time, if someone was, um, had, had grown up in the teachings of the faith and had been seen as being diligent and, um, and someone that, that stood out, they would have been able to travel around teaching in the synagogues and teaching with groups of people and even maybe have developed into the point where they can have their own interpretations that they're sharing. And uh, Jesus certainly fell within that category as he was traveling around teaching. He had his own, you know, sharing parables, his own ways of explaining and helping people understand what God's uh, law and, and word was teaching them. And so a part of that process also was that as a rabbi or a teacher in the faith, that people might seek Jesus out as they did teachers of the faith, as Jesus um, probably did himself, to learn and learn alongside uh, someone that was an expert, not only an expert in understanding the law and the teachings, but in living it out and being able to help and explain it for others. So Jesus clearly had a name for this. He was known, he was teaching, people were coming to him. And uh, the other way this worked is that sometimes people that a rabbi knew that they'd been working with and teaching saw something in them and invited them to become their disciples. And uh, they would then uh, spend all of their time with the rabbi or the teacher. They would not only learn all of the the law and memorizing and all of that and teachings of the faith, but they would also then learn from that particular rabbi or teacher how they lived out the faith, how they explained it and taught it to others, how they uh, looked at Midrash, which is kind of using your imagination to fill in what's not specifically written within the biblical text, but uh, but what we need to, to use to fill in, to explain, and what, what is going on in our lives beyond just what's written on the page. And so what we see in this passage is the description of Jesus doing just that. He's been teaching, he's been uh, living out his faith, and as we know perfectly, as he is uh, the one who's come to, to live out and show the way perfectly, to fulfill the scriptures, which means to live it out perfectly. And so as we see he's doing this, we see that he comes to people he knows, he's had a relationship with, they're not just strangers he randomly meets on the street and calls, but people he knew and invites them to come and to follow him, to learn from him, to teach alongside him, so that as we begin to see later on and as Jesus um, leaves uh, his earthly ministry, that sending people out, that he sends out these disciples to then go and do likewise. So as we see in this story, we see this process unfolding, and it's a process that then we are invited into, that we are invited to not just learn about the teachings, but to come alongside Jesus, come alongside those uh, who have come before us in the faith, and to learn from them, not just to memorize some scriptures, but to learn how to live out the faith in as faithful way as possible. And so this story kind of paints a beautiful picture of, of how that was happening for some of the disciples that then we, of course, uh, come to, to know and love deeply as we hear more about them through the stories of scriptures. But I want to focus on some of the parts of the story that are really interesting. So Jesus is teaching with a crowd, and then he um, sees these fishing boats. He goes and gets on the fishing boats, and he... Um, begins to to invite the fishers to be a part of this fishing expedition and uh, they pull in so many fish that they can't hold them all right and so there's this idea of abundance of following jesus meaning that you discover something that is uh not just a secret to life but there's an abundance of life of life giving and uh that being a part of what jesus is doing that following and coming alongside him that listening to him is is going to lead to abundant life. And, and, and it's so powerful that, of course, these disciples do decide to leave everything and follow him. And so it's interesting because we probably more often identify with the crowds. We come and we'll hear the teachings, but we aren't going to leave behind everything. And leaving behind everything for those fishermen meant a bit of shame in community because that meant they walked away from their family and their friends and their social circles and their um, their jobs. And that was a very shameful thing to do in that time period. So it meant a level of shame and rejection and people looking at you funny, side-eyeing you. 
And it meant uh, risking everything for uh, Jesus and what he was inviting them to do, which, of course, didn't look like easy work, but was so powerful when they were to be a part of it, so overwhelming with this abundant life and hope and promise that they were willing to do it, to risk all. We, of course, more often than not, more identify with the crowds, <laughs> go back to our lives, come and get a little bit of teaching, go back to our lives with the idea of really fully, truly giving our entire selves over, no matter what shame, no matter what hardship, no matter how difficult it may be, is probably not uh, what's on our list and our way of living out our faith on a regular basis. And so we come to this story looking for what is possible and, and standing in the midst of, as the disciple did, I am not worthy, I repent. That yes, we have certainly fallen short. Yes, we cannot call ourselves fully followers because we do not do all, risk all, and come alongside Jesus in all ways at all times. But the nice, beautiful thing about that, the good news of that, is that Jesus invites us day after day to do what we can, to come as we are able, to keep trying, and grace and love is abundant, just as the fish are abundant. But the other thing that's present in this is this beautiful way that you see how Jesus is bringing together all the forms of leadership that were a part of uh, the scriptures that we see, um, lived out in the scriptures that we see in the history of God's people, of the Jewish people. So we see that uh, they had prophets, they had priests, and they had kings. And we know how kings went, <laughs> and we know a little about, about those prophets. We're probably less familiar with priests. But Jesus uh, brings all of these forms of leading God's people together into one, and we often will see that mentioned or referenced in our faith, in our liturgies, and throughout scriptures. And we see that in this story very clearly. We see that Jesus is teaching and inviting people and pointing people towards God, the creator, towards being in a relationship with God, the creator. He's calling them out. He's drawing their attention to point it to God. And that is the prophetic way of being in leadership. That is what the prophets do. They oftentimes had odd ways of standing out and making sure people took note of them so they could share this message that would call them out to point them back to God so that they could return to being in relationship as fully as possible with God. And uh, they did this as Jesus did through their pointing out how people might be misunderstanding how they're living out their faith and their teachings. And we, of course, know that Jesus did that quite well and challenged people very often. We see that in this story as well, as Jesus is teaching and then challenges these disciples, these would-be disciples, to think differently, to look at things differently and discover the abundant fish and abundant life that comes from following in Jesus' ways of faith. This priestly way of leading we see present as well. Jesus is not just teaching from, you know, a pulpit, staying away, but Jesus is there amongst the people. Jesus is um, there living with them. You know, he's moving from town to town. He invites the disciples to come alongside him. He's living with people. He goes into their homes. They come into where he is staying. You know, he eats with them. He, as we remember from the story of the wedding, he celebrates with them. He comes alongside them and he shows them the way of faithful living and invites them into that compassionately and humbly. And we see that and see how he is embodying this way of leading and this way of understanding how to bring God's people um, into relationship with God. And we also see the kingly way of understanding Kings not always model the best leadership in the history of God's people as they don't today. But Jesus, of course, is perfect king that is different from others. But what we see is this provision of abundance of the fish that are overflowing, of providing for the people. And we see that clearly in this fishing expedition and the way that these fish are brought in. He's able to provide this abundant, miraculous catch of fish. 
and it awes them and it makes them step aside and take note. It has Simon, you know, I am not worthy. And of course, they then come and follow him. As we think about how the story shows Jesus and his leadership and the different ways he comes to people and tries to invite people into faithful, holy living with God, we can learn a little bit about how we too were then invited to do that in our own lives. Because being fishers of people means that we are sharing the good news and the message of hope of Jesus with people. And we do that by having a relationship with people, not just screaming at random people on the street or knocking on random doors, but we do that through people that we know that we have relationships with. And we do that through the way that we speak and, and, and instill words of encouragement and hope and maybe wisdom and guidance, but we also do that through how we ourselves are living our lives of faith together with the people that we're in relationship with and with people that we meet that we don't know. The way we live out our lives is perhaps our greatest evangelism or way of spreading the hope of Christ. We do not do this in a kingly way. We see throughout history how that has been done wrong when evangelism and Christian people have tried to tie power with faith. We see how that led to all kinds of atrocities throughout history. We see how that led to um, particularly thinking about our own American history, the way that Christians had slaves that they baptized and, and had preachers and churches for the slaves on their plantations while still saying that you are less than, you are subhuman, and you are uh, my property that I get to abuse and mistreat. And so we see how that kingly understanding is not something that anyone but Jesus does because we always get it wrong. And so we are invited to think about how we can live into being better in those other ways at sharing the hope by living our own lives as fully as possible alongside Jesus, following in the ways he lived out faith. I think in this time and in this particular month, as we think about Black History Month and celebrating all of the many left out accomplishments of our Black brothers and sisters and siblings, that we might take note of how we often fail and forget to do this kind of relational, celebratory, compassionate, humble ministry with one another. Perhaps if we are able to take a step back, we can learn from one another and particularly thinking of those of us who need to really reflect on the ways that we have caused harm to our Black siblings and that we have continued to ignore the ways that reconciliation and healing need to occur, both from our own lives and hearts, our communities, our systems, and in our world as a whole, that we might better be able to do this work if we follow in the ways that Jesus models and invites us into in this passage of compassionate and humble, relational, living alongside, faithful living, teaching, and being. Perhaps we might take this time and this month and every month of our lives to look to those around us and see how we might learn from others about how we need to repent and call out as the disciples do, I am not worthy, I need to change. And as we learn from one another and as we take a stance of compassion and humility, we might just discover that our relationships, that our communities, that our church, that our world begins to look more like those fishing boats and nets that are flowing with abundant fish, abundant life and grace. And so we are invited into this life and to go forth sharing the same invitation with others. Amen. Swing to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to
to carry me home. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home. A band of angels are coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. If you get there. Before I do, coming for to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm a coming to, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low. Coming for to carry me home. I'm sometimes up, I'm sometimes down. Coming for to carry me home, but still my soul feels heavenly bound. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, sweet. Cherry on, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet cherry on, coming for to carry me home. Morning. As we continue in worship, we continue in our time of prayer together. Our prayer concern listings are in the bulletin for you, and we uh, invite you to lift those up in your daily prayer lives. Uh, we continue to lift up Verinda and her family in the loss of her father, and we continue to lift up the Bovies in the midst of uh, their recent illness and Bob's uh, recovery and prayers for um, that to to continue to improve and for them to be able to be well together. As we continue, I invite you to open your hearts as we pray together. Holy God, we come to you this morning weary of the way things are going. We so desperately want things to be the way they were because we remember how easy they seemed, how fun they felt, how familiar it all was. But we also look forward with anticipation to the time where we don't just return to what was, but discover the new normal with all of its excitement and hope, with new understandings and discoveries that we have come to know are necessary and true in this pandemic time. We pray that you would fill our hearts with the strength and the hope and renewed faith we need, that you would continue to help us support one another and care for one another in community as we all continue to wrestle with the grief and the trauma, the anger and the frustration that is present all around us and in our hearts. We pray that you would watch over all of those in our community and keep them well, that you would continue to bring new treatments and reduce the illnesses and that you would bring an end to this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, those that are facing illness. We pray for those that are struggling with their mental health and feeling disconnected, those that feel alone and isolated, struggling spiritually. Help us continue to find new ways to reach out and to support one another so that everyone knows they are loved, everyone feels connected through your spirit and in community, and every child knows that they are your beloved made in your image. And God, continue to help us to find 
ways to reconcile and rebuild where things have been torn down, destroyed, and made wrong. Help us discover not only in our own lives the ways we need to repent and live differently, but in the lives of our communities and our institutions and in our world. Help us be leaders and hold our leaders accountable to your ways of rebuilding, of working for the good of all, of reconciliation, of working for peace and wholeness. And God, remind us each and every day that even when we cannot see it, you are present and at work in our lives and in our world, that you are always there with us. And as we look around, remind us that we are all one family and that we are all made in your image and your beloved. And it is with our beloved siblings that we lift up the Lord's Prayer, in unison with them today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to participate in the um, act of giving in our time of worship. If you need to give electronically, that information is posted for you and in our announcements and on our website. we come to the end of our service, we always end with our mission statement, and I will invite you to join as the words are on the screen. Our mission is to welcome all people as they are, to grow together in Christian faith and fellowship, and to share Christ-like love in word and deed. Now go forth, knowing that God created you in love and sustains you in abundant grace, and that God invites you into a new way of living that leads to abundant life so that you too might invite others and point them to the hope and abundant life that is in Christ. Amen. Hope to see you all at Zoom Fellowship Hour, 11 o'clock, following the service. And hope to see you all soon. Blessings. Have a great week.